Today we're going to be discussing the experiment identifying emission spectra of gases and we're going to read the introduction paragraph here. As we have seen that different elements have different numbers and arrangements of electrons outside their atoms, in this experiment we will view the emission spectra of several gases, elements, or mixtures compounds or mixtures. When an electric current, which is a form of energy, is passed through a gas, the electrons move up to excited states, which are higher energy levels, and then fall back down in energy towards their ground state. When the electrons fall back down, they release the energy they absorbed, and this energy appears as light. Each element, compound, or mixture has its own colors, which are like a fingerprint for that element, compound, or mixture. Let's look at a quick example of hydrogen, which is the simplest element. You know that hydrogen just has an electron in the 1s orbital, and that's all it has. Now, theoretically, there exists a 2s, a 3s, a 4s, and let's say a 5s, to which hydrogen could move its electron. So if you give hydrogen energy, what you can do is you can make its electron jump up to a higher orbital. Let's say it jumps up to a 2s, or it could jump up to a 3, or a 4, or a 5, etc. Now, um, as, these, as the electron is up there, that's called an excited state, it's going to want to come back down. So let's say the electron is now at the 5s, and it wants to come back down. Um, it could even be at the 6s, and I'm going to add that in for, for purposes that we'll see in a minute. So let's say that there is a 6s uh, orbital as well to which it could go. All right, it could move to the 5, it could even move to the 6. So let's say that it moves at one point it's up at the 6. So if it's up at the 6 and then it, and it goes back down, it'll release light. Let's say it falls from 6 to 2. That's going to release a light that has a higher energy than if it went from a 5 to a 2, or a 4 to a 2, or a 3 to a 2. Initially it's at a 1. Initially it's at a 1, and then it could jump up to a 5, it could jump up to a 6, but it could also jump from a 1 to a 2, and a 2 to a 6, etc. It could go from lots of different transitions. So in this case, let's just say that it went from a 6 to a 2. When it goes from a 6 to a 2, I'll erase this one. Right, it's not going to let me erase it, so I'll just cross it off. When it goes from a 6 to a 2, it's going to release a certain amount of energy. What you're going to find out is it releases violet energy when it goes from 6 to 2, that's violet V. And then um, when it, let me see if I have another color, I could even write it in violet. Okay, there we go. So violet, this is the violet light, let's say, when it goes from 6 to 2. And then when it goes from uh, 5 to 2, it's a blue light that you could see. And then when it falls from 4 to 2, it's more like a teal color that you see. And then when it falls down to a uh, 2 from 3 to 2, it's a red. Okay, and these are all the different colors that you would see. So when you did your lab, um, either in the demo or in the actual lab, you would see the following colors through what we call a diffraction grating. So we'll talk about the diffraction grating in a moment. But you had this little slide through which you looked, and you saw a bunch of different colors. You saw a red line, let's say right over here, and then you saw the teal, let's say, was somewhere over here. And then you might have seen the blue. It was a little hard to see that one. But if you saw blue, let's say it was over here. And then let's say you saw the violet all the way at the end over here. So these colored lines that you saw represented the electrons falling between different energy levels. So when you saw this red line, it indicated that the electron was falling from level 3 to 2. Eventually, it would have to go back to 1 as well, but you can't see that because that's going to be ultraviolet light, which I mentioned this in a different video. So when electrons fall to level 1, that's going to be ultraviolet light. 
because it's too much energy. You can't see it because the transition is so big of an energy drop. It's light that has more energy than you could detect with your eyes. So that happens to be ultraviolet. And then um, if you were to look for um, the light going to level two, that's the visible light. That's what you could see, which is the Roy G. Biv. So this is all the visible light that you see is when the electrons fall to level two. Okay, they still fall to level one, but you can't see what's going on there. And then uh, if it's going to be uh, level three, the end, that's going to be infrared because that's less light energy than is visible to you and I, you and me. So without going too crazy with this, we're just trying to understand what's going on. That electrons get excited to higher levels, then they fall back down. When they fall back down, they release a certain amount of energy. And that energy is a very specific amount of energy between these energy levels because it's quantized. And we can actually see the transitions that are ending at level two, and they're going to correspond to visible light. And in hydrogen's case, we saw these lines. Now, any other element is going to have a different situation going on here in terms of where the electrons are falling, and therefore they're going to have a different pattern which is called an emission spectrum it's almost like a uh, a fingerprint for that element so when you're doing this lab and you go to hydrogen you would see that the hydrogen is more like a uh, a pink color so we'll just use this as pink that would be the overall color that you see with your eye and then you would draw the spectral diagram so whatever we drew up here is going to go right there. That's going to be what you draw in your spectral diagram. And the reason you can even see any of this is because of the diffraction grating. So the diffraction grating right here has 750 grooves per millimeter. Okay, there's these tiny little grooves that you can't really even see with your eye. If you were to look at a side view, it has tiny little grooves like this. Okay, so that's the diffraction grating right here. So what happens is when light comes in, a red light which has a longer wavelength is going to split somewhere differently than uh, blue light, let's say. Okay, this picture is not going to be perfect, but hopefully you'll get the idea. All right, so blue light which has a uh, um, smaller wavelength like this. Let's say it's going to go out like that. So because the light is splitting, then it ends up being these lines that you see in different spots right, with your diffraction grating. So uh, the purpose of the diffraction grating, you need this in order to see the colored lines, which is the emission spectra. Without this, you couldn't see them. Okay, emission spectra. And how does it work? It has tiny little grooves. And when light hits these grooves, it bounces off in different directions because every light has a distinct wavelength. So I'll say that again. Um, this has tiny little grooves. This is how it works. This is how you answer the question at the end of the lab. It has tiny little grooves. And when the light hits the grooves, it goes off at a different direction because every light has its characteristic wavelength. Here's what so you would see with a hydrogen, hydrogen tube. tube. When you turn this on, on you'll, see you'll see a bright, a bright light. light. This light this is light actually, actually pink, pink, but it, but it doesn't, doesn't show up, show up that, way that, that way on the video, video as easily. As easily. However, what you can see, which is interesting, is when you put a diffraction grating in front of it, it splits the light into different colors. You can see the red, the teal, and the violet there. And that's what the diffraction grating is doing, is it's splitting that pink light into the component colors, which you see over there. There's actually a blue, which you might or might not be able to see. And that's the purpose of the diffraction grating. Every element or compound that you test will have a different set of colored lines, and it's almost like a little fingerprint for, for that, that element. element.